nothing changes. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It is the last day of January. Today's the 31st, uh, 2021. Thank you guys for joining me and a huge story that has been in the news everywhere and it directly affects all of us as resellers or anybody who owns a business, entrepreneur, especially if at any point you decide to hire an employee or even a part-time, full-time lister, uh, maybe just customer service help, whatever it is, if you officially put someone either on payroll or even paying them as a third-party contractor, 1099, it is going to affect you in the coming years, even this year. And that is the controversial $15 an hour minimum wage um, increase that was uh, essentially voted in. Uh, many, many states have voted it in. Uh, at, a, at a federal level, they're implementing this. It is going to be uh, game changing in a way. And so let me explain kind of my breakdown. Let me tell you what happens. And I want to reference a story. A lot of you know my friend Drive Time with Dave. I want to reference you a story about him. Uh, from many years ago, probably eight to 10 years ago when I didn't know him quite as well. But $15 an hour, uh, the big argument has always been if we pay people, uh, minimum wage people, more money that everything around us has to go up in price in order to offset the pay. So take, for example, somebody who works, we love the McDonald's example, right? Somebody working at McDonald's right now, here in Florida, I believe the minimum wage is like $8.25 or $8.45. It's somewhere in the low eights, mid eights, something like that. And um, if you take that job over the next few years, now this isn't an instant $15. They get like a dollar pay raise every year over the next four years or something to get themselves up to 15. But either way, once they hit $15 an hour, you now have somebody who was working for eight, nine, maybe even $10 an hour working for $15 an hour. So we take a, a, a double cheeseburger, I don't know, something like that, that's $2 uh, for us to buy, and they can produce X amount of cheeseburgers an hour, and at $15 an hour, that means they gotta produce eight cheeseburgers just to cover the $15, just to get back the $15 that we're spending on these burgers, or $16. But don't forget, guys, this is where I wanna break it down. Just because somebody produces $15 and the customer pays $15 does not mean you're breaking even. You now have payroll costs. Those employees cost McDonald's payroll tax. They cost insurance or overhead. They cost uh, potentially workman's comp if you become big enough. They cost you the electric and the water that they use while they're at work, the toilet paper they use. They are now costing you for any mistakes that they make, losses. We call those, you know, overages. Uh, bartenders might call them pours, you know, heavy pours, over pours, spillage. There's all kinds of more expenses associated with that employee. So their $15 an hour is actually not $15 an hour. It costs the owner probably $17 or $18 or $19 an hour, an extra couple of dollars an hour. When I paid employees on um, actual uh, W-2 payroll through my QuickBooks, the, uh, the, the amount of money, like if I paid them say $400 a week, it would actually cost me like 475 or $480 because that's the payroll tax and the insurance that I was putting in towards them. They're part of, you know, my part, excuse me, of their taxes to go towards like FICA and Medicare and stuff like that. So that is all things that people don't take into account that a $15 employee actually costs the business owner uh, you know, $17, $18 an hour, maybe $19 an hour, who knows? That was costing me at 400, was like 40 hours at $10, costing me 480. So that was like another $2 an hour. So there's 17 bucks an hour at that point. Then if you have an employee costing you $17 an hour, they can't be producing 20 or 21 or $22 an hour. You can't just operate to spend $22 to make three bucks. Doesn't make sense, right? None of us would go out and buy something for $22 or $21, or excuse me, or $17 to make $4 at 21 or 22, right? We're never gonna spend $17, $18 an hour to make a couple bucks. If I'm going to spend $17, $18 an hour on an employee, we have to be making two, three, four times. My friend Drive Time with Dave makes six times his employee's income. If they are a $20 an hour employee, 
he has to get $120 an hour in production out of them, which is about what he does. So he does electronic sales and repairs. And if one of his repair technicians can repair an item that makes him 30 or $40, they need to be able to do it in about 20 minutes because he needs them to repair like three of them every hour in order to cover their $20 an hour paycheck. That's just how he does it. I'm not saying everybody has to operate at six times income, but if I'm gonna spend $15 an hour, which is actually 17 or 18, I want my employee to be able to produce at least, so if we're talking three times, that's $54, $60 an hour is probably what I need them to produce. So let's break that down in resellers terms, right? And as a resale business, a lot of people always come on and go, what should I pay my lister? Somebody to sit and list stuff for me, take photos, take measurements, list things, maybe their electronics, they're gonna clean it up. Well, most of you that sell clothing make about $10 profit per item. Your average sale price is 20, 22, 25. After your cost of goods, after your fees, after all that that we talk about in the other videos, you're making 10, 11 bucks uh, per item. So what can an average person list in an hour? As far as clothing goes, they can list six items. Most people are not listing more than seven or eight in clothing. That's start to finish, photos, measurements, onto eBay, listing, draft, the entire shebang, six, seven items per hour. So at $10, $11 profit, that tells us they're doing 60 to $65 in profit per hour. But we already know there are other costs, including accounting costs spread out over the month, uh, list perfectly cost, my reseller genie, all of these things that cost money, reduce that down from like 60, 65, probably into like the $55 an hour profit range. But some of our material doesn't sell. So even if we take one or two of those off, our employee is probably producing for us about $35 to $40 an hour. And if we're paying them 15, that's two and a half times their paycheck. You could get by on it, but it'd be really, really thin margins. So how much do I think a lister is worth? I think a lister is worth between a dollar and a dollar and a half an item, which if they could get seven items done, would be that $10 an hour. I've always said I believe a lister is worth $10 an hour. If I'm forced to pay them $15 an hour, I'm gonna be really, really tight on the margins. So there's two answers to that question. One is, I have to sell more expensive items. Start selling electronics, it makes sense. I can pay them more money because I'm making more money. But why should I have to pay them more money when the job is essentially the same, which is an argument you'll hear from a lot of small business owners. I'm getting the same amount of work, whether it's photographing a shirt or photographing a DVD player, but this one I'm making $10 and this one I'm making $30, they're getting the same amount of work done, uh, but now I have to pay them more money. Why? Like it's the same effort and work. I get that, I understand that, but if they're producing you more money, then yeah, they're worth a little bit more money. The other argument is instead of selling better items, you have to increase the price of the items you are selling. And we're, we circle right back to our double cheeseburgers where they're no longer $2, now they're $3 because the labor has gone up. With that being said, we see that going up already across the board. We've already seen gas prices in just the last week and a half to two weeks since January 20th. Um, today's the 31st. Uh, I got gas on the 20th, exactly on the 20th. I posted it on Facebook and uh, my car has to have premium gas. It just won't take regular gas. I did it on accident once. The car went like this all the way down the road. It was ridiculous. So um, some of you argue that premium gas isn't any different. I promise you it is. So the gas was 277 a gallon. So some of you are gonna think that's high, but you're used to buying regular gas because I think regular was like two and a quarter. I don't know. But um, it was 277. Fast forward to yesterday. I don't really drive. I went like five days without driving. So I finally had to get gas again. And um, it was 304 or 305? 304, I think it was yesterday. So that is a 27 cent difference in 10 days, 11 days, whatever it was, the 20th, 11 days today, so yesterday, so 10 days, it was a 27 cent difference. That's a big difference. It doesn't make a big difference to, mo to some people, but it makes a big difference to a lot of people. 27 cent per gallon difference, if your gas tank is 15 gallons, just cost you an extra, what, three, four bucks? If you are filling up once a week, that's gonna cost you an extra 16, 18 dollars a month, whatever it is. That's not a lot of money. Nobody should really golf at that. But we have people who make the minimum wage who can't spend an extra 15 or $20 a month on gas. They can't spend an extra 15 or $20 on McDonald's to feed their kid. 
an extra 15 or $20 at the grocery store because the cost of milk or the cost of toilet paper or whatever has gone up by 50 cents here and 50 cents there and a dollar on that. And all of a sudden their $80 grocery trip is now $100. That's 20 bucks. They do it twice a month. That's $40. Their gas tank costs them 20. That's 60. Their, um, all their other expenses have gone up. The electric bill has gone up $10. The water bill has gone up $5. All of a sudden, it's an extra $100 a month that they don't have because they're working on a limited budget, a minimum wage budget. That's just the current state of affairs. That's just how it works, and we're seeing it happen. So when we circle back to the employees getting more money, a lot of people are just like, I'll have to fire the employees. I can't afford to pay them. And that's the sad truth. It's going to happen. And when we talk about resellers hiring employees or listers, you have to know your numbers. I stress it so hard. And if you've ever watched Shark Tank, you have to know your numbers. You have to know how many items of an hour they get up, how much you're making per item, how much all your other expenses are divided out. So if you're selling a thousand items a month and all your other expenses, not fees, not shipping, your accounting, your blah, 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 all this other stuff is costing you a thousand dollars, you know that your items are a dollar more in expense, a dollar less in profit because you have a thousand dollars in accounting and list perfectly and my reseller genie and the cost of your little storage unit that you rent and the electric, all that's a thousand bucks and you sold a thousand items this month. Outside of the fees and shipping, you spent a dollar per item to operate your business. You have to know these numbers so you know exactly how much you're making per item, exactly how much your employee is processing, and exactly how much you can afford to pay them. Some of us may be able to afford to pay the employees $15 an hour, and some cannot afford to pay them. So that is kind of, uh, I've seen it in the, in the groups, and people asking about hiring employees, and how much can they afford to pay them, and can they afford the $15 an hour, and is it worth the $15 an hour? This is dependent totally and wholly and solely on your business. Now, the problem that I've always had is when you hire an employee for like customer service or emails or data entry, they're not actually producing money. A McDonald's employee who's making burgers is producing money. My employee who's sitting here listing ties is producing money by listing they're making me sales. Somebody who's just entering stuff in is just costing me money. So at that point, it just comes down to how much are you willing to spend in order to keep that employee on payroll. So uh, that's a question I get a lot too. They wanna hire a customer service person. I actually had a talk with my, my reseller Genie folks last night, talking to them about hiring you know, somebody to do customer support for them and to do social media. Um, you know, Social media can be productive. If somebody's going out and reaching out to people and getting you customers, bringing them to your store, they can be uh, productive in the way of actually bringing in income. But other than that, it's, that's just based on solely how much you feel comfortable spending uh, in the budget. Okay, so I think I covered that well. I think everybody understands it, $15 an hour. Um, the last point I'm gonna make about it is there was a fantastic uh, documentary on Netflix. It was probably six to 12 months ago. I wanna say it was like beginning of COVID, I, maybe before COVID, I can't remember when it came out, but uh, it's actually produced by the Obamas, interesting, um, but neither here nor there, put that aside. It's about a warehouse in Michigan that was a car factory that was shut down during the housing crisis of 08, 09, the, the recession. Um, eventually, a few years later, a Chinese business owner came to America and bought the factory and reopened it as a windshield factory. He produces windshields in China for all the big, you know, Toyota, Nissan, all the big car manufacturers. He's like the largest windshield producer in the world. Crazy stuff, right? Worth billions of dollars. He reopens the factory and he hires the old workers, many of them. Now they were used to making like $25, $30 an hour at the car factory, which is probably half the reason it got shut down anyways. But he hired them back at a very, very low salary because he said, look, my guys in China work for like your equivalent of 10 bucks an hour. I can't pay you $30 an hour. I, I just can't do it. If I have to pay you $30 an hour, I will fly my Chinese workers over here. They'll work in the factory for much less, and that's just that. So you can have the job. He goes, I'll tell you what, I'll give you like 12 or 13 bucks an hour, whatever it was. I don't know the real numbers, but it was something like that. And he's like, you can have the job or you can continue not having a job. It's totally up to you, and I completely understand. So a bunch of people took the job at like $13 an hour, and everything's going good for a little while. And then they go, you know, this isn't fair. We're working too hard. We used to make $30 an hour. We deserve more money. And... Um, we want to start a union. We want a union 
uh, to negotiate better rates for us. And he had brought his Chinese workers over to train them on these windshields who were working for like less than what the regular workers were working for, the supervisors. And the supervisors would even say, and the, and the employees would say, you know, these, these Americans are lazy. Uh, they don't even deserve the $13 they're getting and they want like $23. They're, they're lazy. And if you watch the documentary, it shows the undercover footage and, and they're right. The Chinese workers just work their butts off. Well, they try to start a union and at the very end of the documentary, I don't want to give it away too much, but the guy goes, look, I'm not going to pay you more money. You can vote for a union all you want. I don't care. Uh, I just bought a robot for $250,000 that can do the job of four of you that I'm already paying, you know, like $100,000 a year for the four of you uh, or, or $150,000 a year. You guys want me to pay you enough that it'll be $250,000. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a quarter million in the machine. The robot's gonna go there. It's gonna do your job. It's gonna do your job better and faster because it's a robot. It's gonna cost me one time and in two years, I'll have the money back by not paying you and I'll be break even and I have my piece of machinery and my piece of machinery doesn't call out sick like all of you do. It doesn't get hurt. It doesn't do any of this stuff and if it breaks down, I spend a little money, I get it fixed and we're back up and running for X amount of time. And unfortunately guys, we already see that in McDonald's where you can touch screen order. We already see that at uh, Amazon's Go stores where there's no employees, you just walk in, scan your items and walk out. We already see that at Walmart and Target where they have cashierless, you know, checkout, quick checkout where you don't, you scan it yourself. It's becoming automated and people complaining about more money is causing that. And the federal minimum wage or the state minimum wage is going up is causing that. I completely understand and I sympathize with people who want to make more money. The problem is, and this goes with everything, and this is without getting political, this is just straight facts. Anytime you're forced to pay an employee or your expenses go up or your cost of goods go up, whatever it is, the cost of the product has to go up with it. That's just the way it goes. Milk was 50 cents a gallon back in the day. Now milk is $3 or $4 or $5 a gallon wherever you live, whatever it is. Why did milk go from 50 cents a gallon to $5. Why did a candy bar go from 10 cents to a dollar? Well, because over the course of all these years, the cost of getting it to market and the employee to put it to market has gone up. As that goes up, the cost of the products go up. That's just the way it is, guys. There's no two ways about it. And that goes for not just the minimum wage, but everything. If we take everyone's healthcare and give everyone cheap healthcare, it is going to cause our taxes to go up. The, the reason that this happens is because there's no such thing as free money. The money has to come from somewhere, always. No matter your politics, the money, whether it's from more taxes, whether it's from increased cost of goods, whether whatever it is, increased gas, it always has to come from somewhere. If we give out $2,000 stimulus checks across the planet, across this country, which I agree people that have been out of work, I made this video, need compensation. They need to be compensated and given money for being forced out of a job. But that money has to come from somewhere. So for people to think otherwise is lunacy. It's insanity. And the only place that that money really can come from is taxes. And so just something to pay attention to and something to always remember. Nothing in life is free, especially when you're being paid to do a job that raises its pay wage, its minimum wage, or when the government gives out money, be it through a check, through better, cheaper health insurance. We all deserve, we all want free health insurance and lower taxes and all this stuff and better minimum wages. Of course we all want that. But the reality is you can want in one hand, you have to have a way to pay for it in the other. Okay, so hopefully I didn't get too deep into that, but I just had to make that point that you know nothing is free and, and, and somebody is going to suffer when things have to go up in price. Enjoy the video guys. As always, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you like this channel. Make sure you subscribe to this channel for future videos. Uh, I actually have a mini bulk purchase that I did. I'll do a video for you guys soon. And if you need anything, uh, if you need the accounting program, Today also is the last day for the uh, CPA, not your dad's CPA, excuse me, Mark II's uh, Reseller Tax Academy. It's discounted using Rockstar 
Flipper, I think it's actually just Rockstar. I'll put the discount code below, use the link, check it out. Uh, he's a licensed CPA in e-commerce. He can help you get your taxes ready. I know most of you are getting your 1099, so use that link below, click it, check his website, and if you're interested in getting his help from a real licensed CPA, Mark will help you out, he's awesome. And that discount code will be down there as well to save you 50 bucks, I believe. It's an awesome deal. It is worth it. And you will thank me later for the stress and the, the amount of weight taken off of your shoulders from getting your numbers correct. Have a wonderful afternoon, guys, and I'll see you the rest of this week.